Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Today is my first lecture of Thermodynamics ME212. Hello. <clears throat> Since I can see that there is no participant yet except me, so I go. We will prepare it. And in the meantime, I'm going to record this lecture because time is limited, only 40 minutes, and I've got to deliver the lecture. So if you have any trouble, please contact Ms. Rosina. <clears throat> now, uh, the objective of this lesson is the students will learn the classification and function of different types of air compressors. Introduction. The usage of compressed air is not limited only to industry, but they are also used in manufacturing, in welding, in construction, power plants, ships, automobile plants, painting shops, and for filling breathing apparatus to oxygen cylinders and respirators in ICUs of hospitals. Thus, Compressors, there are so many types of air compressors used specifically for the above purposes. Let us describe various types of air compressors. <clears throat> According to principle of operation, air compressors will be classified uh, as uh, given below. Compressors are classified in many ways, out of which the common one is classification based on principle of operation. In this diagram, skeletal diagram, you can see compressor, <coughs> compressors' main classification according to principle of operation is uh, positive displacement compressors, PD machines, PDM, and Dynamic, positive and dynamic. Principle of operation of positive displacement machine is different from dynamic. In positive displacement machine, actually, volume of air is contained and brought to minimum to raise the pressure. Then, in dynamic, velocity uh, of air is increased and then brought to uh, then slow down. In another device, uh, that is uh, diffusion. So in impeller or in rotor, velocity is increased, velocity of the air is increased by giving it for dynamic force. And then it is slowed down to increase pressure. Kinetic energy is converted first, kinetic energy is given to the air, then kinetic energy is converted into potential energy, it increases pressure. So there are two types of dynamic machines, centrifugal and action. But in this chapter, you will learn only positive displacement machine. Second part, dynamic machine will be studied uh, in next chapter. Now, coming on positive displacement machines, reciprocating uh, positive displacement machines can be divided into two parts. Major, there are reciprocating, uh, reciprocating and uh, other ones are rotary type. And reciprocating means moving to and back. So piston and cylinder alignment, and piston moves to and back, and piston is given to and back motion with the help of a uh, crankshaft, and the crankshaft converts the rotary motion of driver uh, into, uh, into reciprocating motion. So reciprocating compressors <coughs> have various categories, single acting, double acting, uh, inline and V-shape, and diaphragm type. So, uh, on the other hand, rotary compressors are rotated by the motor directly, and they have different categories like blow type, screw type, scroll type, bed type, and liquid ring type. Now, uh, subclassification of reciprocating compressors is given here under number one inline compressors, V shaped compressors. Tandem piston compressors, single acting compressors, double acting compressors, diaphragm compressors. <laughs> what does it mean? Uh, inline compressors 
when compressors are array, arranged, multi-cylinder are arranged in line. Then V-shaped when more than uh, one cylinders are arranged in V-shape on the body of the compressor. Tandem piston compressors when one uh, uh, one shaft is connected to another shaft, which is and cylinders are arranged in tandem in line. So tandem piston compressor and single acting compressors are those where force uh, force is exerted from uh, from one side of the piston, not from the other side. Suction is taken place on one side of the piston. Double acting compressors when suction takes place. Suction and discharge takes place from both sides. Both sides of the piston, to and back, are active, and they they and they uh, compress the gas from both sides uh, in forward stroke and backward stroke. Diaphragm compressors are just a rubber or some flexible material diaphragm, which is vibrated to and back, and this compresses the air. Some classic classification of rotary compressors is given here. The rotary compressors are divided into screw compressors, bent type compressors, lobe and scroll compressors, and other types. Some classification of rotor dynamic compressors are under rotor dynamic compressors, centrifugal compressors, and angular flow compressors. Classification of compressors according to other aspects. The compressors are also classified based on other aspects like number of stages. So they are single stage and two stage type of compressors, cooling method and cooling method and uh, medium. Co uh, cooling method and medium, air cooled, water cooled and oil cooled. Drive types are uh, maybe engine driven, compressor maybe engine driven, compressor maybe motor driven, Turbine driven belt, chain, gear, or direct coupling drives. Lubrication methods also vary splash lubricated, force lubricated, oil free compressor. Service pressure, from point of view of service pressure, they are classified as low pressure compressors, medium pressure, and high pressure compressors. Reciprocating inline compressors, the principle of working is shown here. So here is piston. This is number one is piston. Number two is the clear space in front of piston. And this is the head of the comp compressor in the head or cap of the compressor. There are two valves from four and five. Number four is uh, opens inward. So it is suction valve. And number uh, this number five opens uh, outward to this discharge one. Piston moves to and back with the help of the shaft. Shaft moves with uh, the piston, uh, piston rod, piston, uh, and piston rod moves with the help of uh, uh, rotating uh, crank shaft. These are most commonly used compressors with varying pressure ranges. These are simple to design with almost very little automation. The cylinders of various stages are found in a straight line when seen from top. These co <coughs> compressors are commonly Directed, uh, directly driven by electric motors or diesel engine. V-shaped compressors. These are usually air cool. These are usually air cooled compressors with eccentric, uh, sorry, with concentric valves. Uh, v shape with concentric valves mounted on uh, each cylinder head. The compressor at different units displays usually by 90 degrees, may or may not be connected to the same crank pin or the crankshaft. Higher capacity compressors are water cooled, better torque, and balancing is achieved by displacing the units by a certain angle.
Now, see the lectin compressors. These are usually, usually reciprocating compressors. Uh, reciprocating compressors, which has piston working on air only in one direction. The other end of the piston is often free or open. It does not perform any work. The air is compressed only on the top part of the piston. The bottom of the piston is open to crankcase and not utilized for compression air. Double acting compressors, these compressors are having two sets of suction intake and delivery valves on both sides of the piston. As As the piston moves up and down, both sides of the piston is utilized in compressing the air. The intake and delivery valves operate corresponding to the stroke of the compressor. The compressed air delivery is comparatively continuous when compared to a single acting air compressor. Thus, both sides of the piston are effectively used in compressing the air. Rotary compressors are not of reciprocating nature, therefore does not have any piston and crankshaft. Instead, these compressors have screws, vans, scrolls, and other devices which rotate and thus compress air. The rotating compressors are classified into screw type, vent type, lobe type, scroll type, and other types. Rotary compressors, the screw compressor, the screw compressors are efficient. The screw compressors are efficient. In low air pressure requirements, two screws rotate uh, intermeshing with each other, thus trapping air between. Here is screw compressor shown on this diagram. Here is the, this is this is the rotor shaft driven by a motor and with gear system, another screw which is, this is driver screw and this is driven screw. So here are the bearings, uh, roller bearings, uh, roller and uh, ball bearings are installed here. And at this end and this end of the shaft, seals are provided not to, to stop leakage. And it may be water cooled also, so there is a water jacket provided around the body. So this screw is oil free because oil may hamper the compression process of the gas. So they are very very accurately manufactured, and there is a very small clearance. They don't touch with each other. Nonetheless, they don't allow much of the gas to leak. Uh, between the screws. So the screw compressors are efficient in low air pressure requirements. The screw rotates uh, intermeshing with each other, thus trapping air between the screws and the compressor casing, forming pockets which progressively travel and get squeezed and delivering it at a higher pressure, which opens the delivery valve. The compressed air delivery is continuous and quiet in operation, the reciprocating compressor. The vein compressor, the vein type air compressor is having a fixed casing and a rotor disc which has slots of holding the sliding plates as shown in figure. Here is the figure. We will have more picture, more uh, diagrams also. So this is the rotor, and inside the rotor, inside this rotor, are these are slots, and in the slots are veins, just uh, strip of uh, plates. These plates are made of some non-metallic material like uh, fiberglass or maybe carbon or graphite, uh, we do not need even lubrication. 
and they do not cause much friction also. So you can see this rotor and casing. This yellow color is the casing and this white color is the rotor. Rotor is slots and these are vents ideally directed outwards where space is available. This rotor has cent center of axial over here and center of this uh, hole in the body that is casing is uh, away from it. That is why they are called eccentrically aligned. And because, because of this eccentricity, this green color space is provided like a, a you know, a lunar shape uh, space, crescent shape space. In this space, uh, since uh, rotor is rotating and bands can slide outward because of, uh, because of centrifugal action, so they close the space, they touch the outer, they, they touch the casing from inside, and air gets trapped between two veins in this area. Uh, um, uh, air, or if it is left side, it is intake, so air intake takes place, and if it is rotating anti clockwise, then uh, air will get compressed up to this point, and air discharge port is open, and uh, air will be thrown through the discharge port. In the discharge port, there is no well, and when uh, this rotor, uh, this van reaches air, so it is exposed to uh, discharge port, and discharge port is connected to the receiver. So receiver pressure, uh, uh, from the receiver gas is at higher pressure, it reverses back and tries to enter into the rotor. So in this process, compression takes place. Compression, very uh, part of compression takes place uh, in the rotor, but uh, some compression may take place because of irreversible mixing of receiver gas with the discharge gas. So this is how a rotary vent compressor works. Another diagram, only two when rotary compressor is shown here. And next is scroll compressor. The scroll type compressors are being uh, are having scrolls. So scrolls like a spiral are shown here. Uh, they are driven by uh, uh, outer scrolls are driven. Uh, Outer, uh, one scroll is fixed, other scroll is rotated by a driver. The scrolls, outer edges trap air and then uh, as they rotate, uh, air, air, travels from, air travels from outward to inward. Air travels from outward to inward, thus getting compressed due to reduction in the area. Thus, the compressed air is delivered through the central space of scroll to delivery end. Here are the scrolls shown, different stages of compression process. It takes, it take, takes place and scroll position is this. This is blue color scroll and there is another gray color scroll. So fixed scroll is this inside this gray color and, and, and orbiting, they, orbiting, orbit, they orbit like planet. So the orbit scrolling, uh, this outer one is scrolling orbit and inner one is fixed. So compression chamber is formed between the between the curves, curved surfaces of outer scroll and inner scroll. So this orbiting motion causes increase and decrease of the volume. So here you can see that this this orange color Gas is now compressed. Uh, gas is now compressed between uh, outer scroll and inner scroll. Then air discharge takes place uh, from here, and next is again cycle is repeated. So compression, uh, suction, compression, and discharge processes are completed by orbiting motion of scrolls. Low compressors. What are low compressors? They are also rotary type of compressors, but their shape, rotor shape is like a lobe. They are cycloidal, uh, they are cycloidal type, uh, 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 not exactly circular, they are cycloidal, 
or some sort of oval shape. And the lobe types are compressed in very simpler uh, type with no complicated moving parts. They are single or a with single lobe or twin lobes attached to the driver shaft. And driven shaft is run by the driver shaft gear mechanism. Uh, they, get, they get engaged with each other. Now the lobes are displaced by 90 degree. They are displaced by 90 degree. Thus, if one of the lobes is in horizontal position, the other is at the uh, at that particular instant will be in vertical position. Thus, the air gas trap in between these lobes and they uh, rotate, they get compressed and delivered to the every line. Here is the diagram. This is one lobe, this is another lobe. So two lobes, one is rotating, other is rotated by gear mechanism. This is rotor and this is, this is driver, it's driven. So you can see that this is the body, outside body, and lobe is not exactly circular, this is uh, cycloidal. And this lobe, this face of lobe, and this upper and bottom of the lobe is in uh, top and bottom contact of this, uh, this part of the body. And on right side, this space now air is trapped. So air is trapped, and when it moves horizontal, and this has become vertical, then air will be trapped there. So in one rotation, in one rotation, there are four types of these bodies: B1, B2, B3, B4. These are four times. One be here, one be here, half rotation, and another half rotation, one be here, one be here. So four times B. If this is equal to B, this then you trap. This volume of air trapped here is called B, then four times B, four B volume uh, is given in one rotation. So this is how uh, our compressors work. Uh, uh, this is how we classify the types of compressors. So with this, uh, this part of the lecture is finished. Now, after this, one by one, we will take So, now I'll share with you another screen, and that will be so. So I'll start now. I'll explain briefly Until now, I've explained briefly classification of all types of positive displacement compressors uh, because other type, rotary, uh, other type uh, that is dynamic type will be explained in next chapter. In this chapter, we will study precipitating compressors, ro rotary band compressors, and uh, uh, their theory and their derivation of formula. Now, let us start. With reciprocating, reciprocating compressor, they are most commonly used in industry. So, in thermodynamics, we study integral PD. So, W work input to a compressor is integral PD in thermodynamics one. Here is the revision of that part. And in this part, this is familiar to you. So, work input is equal to 
that uh, in polytropic process, uh, PV ratio n is equal to constant. We can uh, we have proved uh, in uh, thermo one that that is equation three, chapter three, equation number twenty four. V2, V2 minus P1, V1 divided by N minus 1. This is the work in code for polytropic process. And ratio of P1 upon P2 is equal to V2 upon V1 raised to N, where N is the polytropic index. So starting from here, So, keeping in mind that law of PV raised to n is equal to constant, uh, we draw a diagram which is called PV diagram of piston processes taking place inside the machine. That is, suction takes place at constant pressure at temperature P1, T1. Line, line, DA, line DA shows suction process, and line AB, this is the curve AB, shows polytropic process of compression PV raised to n is equal to constant. And line BC on this diagram shows at constant and discharge at the constant pressure, P2 and T2. So this is suction, compression, discharge. In this diagram, it is assumed that there is no clearance. After piston reaches top dead center over here, there is ideally no clearance, which is not true. But for, in this diagram, uh, for simplicity, we, are, we have not shown uh, clearance. So without clearance work done in this cycle is area of this diagram, this whole diagram, minus this diagram. So area encroached by A, B, C, D diagram, A, B, C, D cycle. One cycle is completed by this diagram, A, B, C, D. But only one, two process, this is compression process, other is constant pressure and temperature suction and constant temperature pressure discharge. So Active process is PV is to n equal to constant, which is compression process. Now, work input in polytropic process in process one two can be uh, done like this. So, uh, from the diagram, uh, from the uh, from the uh, uh, previous uh, knowledge of thermodynamics, we know that this equation is equal to uh, work input can be derived like this. And from here, work input is equal to n upon n minus one, P2, Vb minus P1, Va. Only numbers are changed, actually P2, V2 minus P1, V1. So V2 is here, Vb, and V1 is equal to Va. From equation uh, 2.6, which is in thermodynamics one, we have studied, PV is equal to MRT, well-known ideal gas law. From PV is equal to MRT, uh, we can convert this into temperature. PV can be converted into RT. M and R are common. So taking MR common, we can get work input is equal to N upon N minus 1, MR, T2 minus T1. So these two equations, 12.1, 4.2, represent work done in a reciprocating compressor in one cycle. Now, delivery temperature T2 can be uh, usually P1, T1 conditions are known. Delivery temperature can be calculated with the help of polytropic law. T2 upon T1 is equal to P2 upon V, P, P, P2 upon P1 divided uh, raised to N minus 1 upon N, which is written here. So, after that, we go to next slide. Now from uh, equation, just we have derived uh, we, uh, 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 indicated power, we can say that indicated power. This from the power calculated with the help of this uh, PV diagram is called indicated diagram because this is what happened inside the machine on the piston. Gas ex uh, um, uh, piston exerts power on gas to, uh, to increase its pressure from P1 to P2, and this process of uh, power input can be calculated as n upon n minus 1, m dot r, P2 plus T1. Now, instead of m, we are increasing m dot. 
m dot means per unit time mass inducted per unit time so that is kg per second so in this case kg per second of air compressed when the mass flow rate of the air now indicated power is equal to with the help of these two formulas 12.6 to 8.7 which is well known to you and we have actually before big term we have uh, studied in the class of mars now examples 12.1 and 12.2 uh, are uh, uh, these are for calculation of input power and what power you can do this exercise it is solved in the book and these are the examples so you will do it as a homework and assignment thank you very much in this lecture you were not present i just wondered what is the reason if there is any reason you should have explained it before starting the lectures once they have been started and you still don't know how to attend zoom meeting please contact to ms rosina or to me or anybody any other teacher thank you very much